the cross is the principal and the prime important point of the whole gospel. The cross is the very important point of the whole gospel and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the assurance of our foundation of our faith and security concerning eternity fulfilled by Jesus Christ. So the gospel, the cross is complete. The resurrection is the security that eternity and life eternal is absolutely true because Christ raised from the grave is a raise also. You know what? We have around 120 nations or nationalities in Black Town Council. So we didn't need to go any kind of the world. You know what? Pray. Let us reach them with the gospel, the power of God unto salvation with Jesus Christ, our Savior. If this is a guarantee from the word of God, the word of God will not return unto him void or empty. There must be one or two or three people willing enough not only to pay the price but obedient to the command of the Lord to become a testimony of the living gospel because this many of them will receive the grace of forgiveness and many of them will be entitled of eternal life which you and I are enjoying today. There must be someone even in a task or prayer the spirit has to move out of the comfort zone and begin to say, Lord, I identify with you. You give me so much. The gospel is alive. I cannot pack up your love. Lord, this mouth, this eyes, and money in everything, my car, I will use it for your glory. Because for me, my life will be in you, my destiny in you. If I have you, I have everything. Amen. Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll proceed here in this wonderful thing. I'll cover the other one this time. You know, Church of God, the power of the gospel, as I'm getting close, produce life in the person's heart. There is a man, an actor, Kirk Cameron, of the Growing Pains. He was a former star of the Growing Pains. He got everything most people desire or crave to have. Success, very successful man. Money, looks, handsome, very handsome man. And fame. Now, when they come to realize and experience the power of the gospel, none of those things, according to him, can be compared to the joy he found later in knowing Christ and being forgiven and being in the right relationship with God that was the confession of this man when he found the Lord. You know, the, to the other generation, they probably don't know this man, Nick Cruz in New York, a gang, gang leader, violent man in New York, street gang leader. And when he kills somebody, and I read some of the story, when he kills somebody, he is demonized. He will just get the blood of the, the blood of the person who just died and put it all over his body. Ha ah! ha! And all the blood all over his body. That's the kind of person he was. Yeah. Nick Cruz. And a man of God there preaching the love of the Lord. And removing, you know, the bottom and said, he stopped over something, preaching, but that man said, Nicky, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. That word of God, and they even took some of the offerings during the time of the great man of God in New York. That voice of God, Jesus loves you, that's this word, keep ringing, keep ringing, keep ringing his heart. Until one day he cannot even contain that Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. He come to the conclusion of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, from servant of Satan, to become servant and minister of Jesus Christ today. That's the power of the gospel. What is this gospel message when applied to you and to all of us? What is this gospel? 
Number one, the first part, you are not ashamed to share the good news of Jesus Christ anytime, any day, any opportunity. You will give an utmost importance more than any other things to be able to transmit the hope of the world today who are dying hopelessly. You have to open your mouth. There is hope, Jesus Christ. Secondly, based on Paul experience, after three days of being blind, he did not eat, he didn't even drink water for three days. No water. Immediately, it must have an immediate answer and response, like Paul, immediately to all of us. It is a message to all of us. Why I'm saying this? Persecution is coming. I said, moderately but will continue to increase coming. So be involved in sharing Jesus Christ. Be active not only being religious. We come here to be strengthened, to be empowered, to be willing enough. Be involved. Because when the time comes, when it increases, when the door is closed and we go to other places, you know, when persecution comes, the main target of persecutions are the Christians. Don't you know that we are the minority today? We are not majority anymore. And if someone will rise up from slumber or sleep or from the grave, in this revival, increase of satanic power. But when you rise up, one king chase a thousand, two king chase ten thousand, three king chase hundred thousand, four king chase one million, five, one billion. If many of us begin to do our work without being told, there is a corresponding reward. You are supported with a warning angels wherever you go. God will address the power of heaven and darkness will flee. In that place, wherever you stand, the presence of God, every place your foot has turned upon, I have given unto you, Lord, I pray in this place. God's presence will be restored there because of one man or two men or because of the church understanding the life of the gospel that you may buy. Amen. Amen. So, question, and very important, there is, yep, wonderful. This life that you have will continue. Listen to this. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Very, very soon, Jesus is coming. Please listen to the word. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. In other words, if you want to get that message, God is saying, it is an emergency call for all of you to begin to do the work because when you try to visualize in your pre-plan beforehand what you ought to do, there is no more time. When you are trying to do it, the next year, the following year, the following year, Lord, I want to work. That moment in time, you will be shocked. The opportunity to serve the Lord and to be blessed and to be used by God might today is given to you. You lose it. Opportunity becomes once in your life, but if you lose it, you cannot get it back in your head. Never. Take it now. And when persecution comes, you will never deny Christ because you are saturated with the love of God. But to some or many people in the Christian, inside the Christian church, many will deny Christ. And many will turn their back from Christ. Because the light of the gospel, which is a primary need of the day, was absent in the very core of the human heart. Once the power and the strength of that is done inside your heart, the tendency is to run away. Like Apostle Peter, I don't know Christ three times. It will happen to those who are not ready. But we are getting ready to say, Lord, I am responsible. I will follow you. And I will obey you. So, brothers and sisters in the Lord, what you will do today, please figure that out. Begin now. Because tomorrow might be late. Secondly, you don't even know your time because the time is not in your hand. And number three, the open doors that are open today might be closed tomorrow. 
So what you can invest now in the gospel of Jesus Christ, begin to invest your talent, your strength, your, your, your attention, and then working for the Lord. Because those work will never be overlooked, will never be put aside by the Lord. It is written in the annal of works in the kingdom of heaven. And you will be surprised when God unveiled and opened up what you have done in His name. You will be overwhelmed. Lord. Did I do that? Have I done that? Yes. I don't know. I forget. Everything that you have done from the very first time that you began to start mission and doing the work for me after 40 or 50 years. It is all written. And you will be acknowledged by the millions and millions of saints of God and the angels of heaven clapping their hands to you because you have done it well from the beginning to the end of your life. If God dies. In a church, such an honor, an honor to become a servant of God. To become the son of the Prime Minister, or to become the son of Queen Elizabeth, to become you know, a son of whoever put in face is great honor. But to become the servant of God and the son of God. Is more than all the combined potentates and hierarchy in the kingdom of earth combined together because you'll be reigning with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and all the riches of the world is become to you what it will hear, it will be yours also. So, that kind of blessing is an honor. Many years ago, I'm confusing here that I, I say this to you. I was only 22 years old. Only high school graduate, four months in the Bible school, very young. But I have come to the point when I went to that place, Lord, when I, I said to the director, Gani, Benshu, Teddy, don't you know when you proclaim the gospel, the good news about the power of God, there's some kind of war between the Muslim and the Christian, and then the Communist Party, you might die. And I said to Brother Bobby from Maryland, he is now 75 years of age. Three of us, Brother Bobby, at a very young age, and I don't want to be proud, and God can hear this. Brother Bobby, we are not only willing to suffer in the mission field if God allows. If we die for the sake of the cause of Christ, as young as we were, we are willing not only to suffer, but to die to serve the Lord at the age of Later on, I found out that my, my <coughs> devotee and all those young people that we train today, they are scattered in different places of Visayan Island province to Bindanao to uh, those places there. They have big, big churches now. And there are a, a devotee of 12 years old supervising three churches, a sister supervising three churches, and one big churches in Mindanao, and some Bonga City and everything. And I said to them, Hey, boy, boy. <coughs> Pastor, thank you. I told you that we will not see each other anymore. After 35 years, I went back to Jesus Christ. I could not believe the way God prospered the world through your obedience. That those people you told just an ordinary are farm people, farm ladies, and 60 and 70 years old, they are now pastors and they build churches in different places. And I said, How about I want to? Uh, I want uh, I want to see you again. Uh, are you willing to be part of me again as your father in faith? They talked to brothers and sisters, married and them. They have all buildings now in the Philippines. Pastor Johnny, we talked to them. They are all happy. We are under you because from the first place you are the father in faith. We have churches in the Philippines and we become the mother here that are looking for us. They are all established. And they recognize my work as a young missionary at the age of 22 because I understand the gospel is life. That life that I received transmitted, transferred to them, and they continue to serve the Lord up to this moment in time. So we have no churches in the Philippines. So when we have Christ to the, to the nation ministry in the Philippines, we have so many members. So we can put up Christ to the nation Philippines. And so I can foresee what's going to happen. So somebody in younger generation will rise up because it will continue to be propagated and continue to enlarge. It's not my word, the word of the Holy Ghost, because the gospel of Christ that is in you, even I'm uh, gone or away, it will continue to flourish because God had in mind that his name would be proclaimed to the world. And so Paul is an example of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation 
the all nations, all nationalities, is starting from where you are in your neighborhood in this place. And God will continue to, to be to bless. Irrespective of all the effective opposition, the workmen of the Lord will continue to be used mightily because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the gospel is the life of Jesus Christ inside of you that cannot be contained by the world. And all you have to do is to submit to him. And I tell you what, many of them will accept Jesus Christ through you as a bottom core. It does not be vehicle of the life of Christ. You are entitled to that. Begin and start today. It's my prayer in Jesus' name.